section one of basho the chief poet of japan and the hokku or epigram verses by matsuo basho translated by basil hall chamberlain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by rob board with poems read in japanese by exemplaro introduction the poet basho was a nobleman of the seventeenth century a d sixteen forty four to sixteen ninety four he early abandoned the empty court life to become a buddhist monk he was really a teacher a reformer who seized upon the poetic art as the best means of appealing to his cultured countrymen and leading them to higher thoughts indeed his favourite word haikai which might be translated high poetry was used by him as a synonym for righteousness in condemning anything he would not say to his followers this is wrong he would say this is not haikai haikai had already become in basho's time a highly specialised form of poetry to which the name hokku is commonly applied the ancient tanka tiny as it was had been cut in half and its first three lines had become a new form of poem containing only seventeen syllables this was the hokku or epigram the form of poem to which basho devoted himself these epigrams were chiefly descriptions of nature or rather sudden flashes revealing nature or man a little dab of colour thrown on a canvas one inch square where the spectator is left to guess at the picture as best he may in 1683 basho's home in yedo was burnt down and after that he wandered as a pilgrim over japan accompanied often by friends or pupils he has left us a diary of his journeyings and of the poetic thoughts they roused chiefly he frequented the beautiful shores of lake biwa which has thus become a classic spot in japan's history end of section one section two of basho the chief poet of japan and the hokku or epigram verses by matsuo basho translated by basil hall chamberlain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by rob board with poems read in japanese by exemplaro early epigrams footnote these three epigrams which have passed into household words are not specially well written neither are they the composition of the three celebrated rulers whose names they bear they are sometimes attributed to shoha an epigrammatist who died in the year sixteen hundred and who meant to paint each with a single graphic touch the characters of the three heroes of his day nobunaga impetuous and cruel hideyoshi clever ieyasu patient because well knowing that as we say all comes to him who waits the empire came to him and remained in the hands of his descendants for over two and a half centuries one nakazareba koroshite shimae hototogisu nobunaga the cuckoo kill it if it sing not Two. Nakazareba, Nakashite Misho, Hototogisu, Hideyoshi. The cuckoo, I will show it how to sing if it sing not. Three. Nakazareba, Nakuma de Mato, Hototogisu, Ieyasu. The cuckoo, I will wait till it sings if it sing not. End of section two. section three of basho the chief poet of japan and the hokku or epigram verses by matsuo basho translated by basil hall chamberlain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by rob board with poems read in japanese by exemplaro 
Epigrams of Basho. 1. Toshkurenu, Kasakite Waraji, Hakinangara. The year has closed while still I wear my sandals and my pilgrim's hat. Written on one of his many pilgrimages. 2. Yamajikite, Nanyuri Yukashi, Sumirengusa. Coming this mountain way, no herb is lovelier than the violet. The Japanese violet, which possesses no fragrance, is, quote, the meanest flower that blows. Basho evinces his love of lowly natural objects by singling it out for mention. According to one commentator, however, the lines are metaphorical. Basho having to his joy met a Buddhist anchorite in the depths of the forest compares him to the violet which shuns the sunlight. 3. Yokumireba. On looking carefully, behold the case weed flowering near the fence. Another example of his appreciation of humble natural objects. 4. When told that it will snakes devour, how frightful is the pheasant's voice! This epigram has become proverbial for beauty marred by misconduct. 5. Okiyo, okiyo. Waga tomo ni sen, nuru kocho. Awake, awake! I'll make of thee my comrade, sleeping butterfly. 6. Yagate shinu, keshiku wa meizu, semi no koe. Nothing in the cicada's voice gives token of a speedy death. This was Basho's parting word to one who visited him in his hut by Lake Biwa. The implied meaning seems to be that human life is short and uncertain, despite present joy in scenes of beauty. 7. Takotsubo ya hakanaki yume wo natsu no tsuki. As literally as a play upon words will permit, Natsu, summer, from which Nasu, to do is mentally supplied this may be rendered octopus pot ay and a brief dream while the summer moon is shining the octopus pot is an earthenware vessel with a large opening which is sunk in the sea the octopus deeming it a quiet retreat crawls inside it and is thus easily drawn up and caught the creature's dream of happiness is short how dreamy, too, is its whole scarcely conscious existence. Equally brief were the dreams of one who should fall asleep on a moonlit night in summer, when the nights are at their shortest. There is an implied comparison with the evanescence of human life. Man himself is like a moonbeam, like a fleeting dream, like a creature only half conscious. 8. Omoshirote, yagate kanashiki. Ubunekana. Oh, cormorant fishing boat so gay, and then again so melancholy. The cormorants start off gaily, but their mirth is changed to melancholy when the fish they have caught are forced from them by the fishermen who hold them in leash. This was composed in 1688 on passing through Gifu which is still the locality where the curious method of fishing with the aid of tame cormorants may best be witnessed. See Things Japanese. 9. Ukiware wo sabeshigarase yo kankodori. Koku, for melancholy me, oh, make still deeper loneliness. Composed on a rainy day in early summer, while Basho was staying at Saga near Kyoto, in the house of one of his favourite disciples. What he means to express is his love of a gentle melancholy, and of leisure for communing with nature, not intruded on by even his best-loved friends. 10. Araumiya, sado ni yokotau Amanogawa. A rough sea, and the milky way stretching across to Sado's isle composed on the coast opposite Sado one starry night, when the waves were running high and the loneliness of his pilgrimage oppressed his spirit. 11. Hia hia to kabe o Oh, those siestas, 
with my feet pressed fearsomely against the wall this verse and the next illustrate the poverty and simplicity of basho's mode of life so fragile is the mud wall of his hut that he fears to break through it when pressing against it with his feet eleven Ikkamina, no the household at the graves assembled white-haired and leaning on their staves to visit the graves of ancestors at stated intervals is an act of piety prescribed by immemorial custom we here see a whole family of aged persons assembled to do honour to those whom they themselves will soon follow to the other world the picture is more solemn than any other that basho has left us thirteen oh the moon gazing where some clouds from time to time repose the eye even beauty is best appreciated when occasionally veiled fourteen in the bright moonlight what appeared like flowers is a cotton field what he took for a grove of lovely cherry blossom is but a common cotton plantation after all unpoetical as the fact is he states it because it is a fact fifteen oh clouds about the moon from whence she falters forth so debonair sixteen o skylark for whose carolling the livelong day sufficeth not seventeen athwart the surface of the stream there lieth stretched the cuckoo's voice the first redaction of this epigram was the translation is founded on both eighteen a rainy day in june and yet the sunflower bends to the sun's course nineteen as lacking oil i lie abed at night the moon my window lights twenty despite that i have nine times risen tis but the fourth hour by the moon in japanese the seventh hour their seven o'clock old style corresponding approximately to our four a m see things japanese the poet has risen repeatedly to gaze at the beauteous moon but still the dawn comes not Twenty-one. is it hard fare or is it love that makes the cat's good wife so lean the term mugimeshi here translated hard fare in order the better to indicate the sense of the verse is literally rice mixed with barley this dish is considered poor eating as compared with rice pure and simple and is therefore often resorted to by the lower classes for economy's sake. End of section three. Section four of Basho, the chief poet of Japan, and the Hokku or epigram verses by Matsuo Basho, translated by Basil Hall Chamberlain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rob Board, with poems read in Japanese by Exemplaro. The Pupils of Basho. 1. Momiji ni wa futa ga oshiekeru sake no kan. Kikaku. 1661 to 1707. Who was it taught the maple leaves to heat the liquor in the bottle? the allusion is to an old chinese story acted in another form on the japanese stage 
in which a fire is made of maple leaves or twigs to heat the sake for a carousal it is related of this poet that at poetry meetings he was often drowsy from drink but would wake suddenly and compose better verses than any of his competitors two umegakaya tonari wa ogyu soemon kikaku this more resembles an epigram in the colloquial sense of that term than any other of the japanese epigrams quoted in the present collection kikaku though afterward famous as one of the ten wits was a mere lad when he composed it he happened to live next door to no less a personage than the confucianist ogyu sorai soemon the dr johnson of his age and country most dwellers in a land where the proprieties and above all erudition were so brightly honoured would have trembled in his presence kikaku merely indicted the above impertinent verse which says that the perfume of the plum blossom i e aestheticism as represented by himself has for its neighbour one ogu soemon the poetical diction of the first line and the flat prose of the rest form a witty but untranslatable contrast three yarikurete mataya samushiro toshinokure kikaku for all my contriving here i am again at the end of the year with nothing but my strip of matting this poet's wild bohemian life often caused him to be out at elbows four is my dream true am i cut down or was i bitten by a flea five a man who is disliked and who lives to old age a winter fly disagreeable folks live longest Six. Yusuzumi, yokuzo otoko ni umarekeru. Kikaku. Taking the cool at eve, I do rejoice that I was born a man. Because men are, and more especially were in old Japan, allowed much greater freedom in the matter of negligee garments than is permitted to the other sex. Seven. Ganjitsuya. Harete Suzume no Monogatari Lancet sixteen fifty four seventeen o seven. I New Year's Day with a clear sky and conversation among the sparrows. Basho declared that, as an epigram for New Year's Day, this could not be improved upon, and modern critics endorse his judgment. Remember that the Japanese New Year, till the reform of the calendar in eighteen seventy three, generally fell about the middle of february when spring is really in view eight umeichirin ichirin hodo no atatakasa lancets slowly it mildens as the plum ventureth forth blossom by blossom the plum blossom is the earliest of all the flowers of spring coming out in fact while the snow is still on the ground for hodo some read zutsu Nine. Come, breeze, and lightly blow upon the flowers, bubbles in the wine. Apparently, the poet's request to the zephyr is that it shall at the same time gently move the blossoms so as to spread their fragrance and waft to the other side of the cup the bubbles of the wine which he is drinking. 10. On a chrysanthemum show, literally on a hundred chrysanthemums assembled. Yellow chrysanthemums, white chrysanthemums, would there were no more names than these. This verse, though irregular in metre, is considered a perfect specimen of the epigrammatic style. Japanese gardeners, 
like our own bestow some fanciful name on every artificial variety of flower produced by their art the poet impatient of these wishes that there should be no other names perhaps no other flowers than the natural white and yellow eleven kikusakeri chokite asobe enomuzara lancets the asters bloom come butterflies and dally o'er the colour dish the exigencies of metre must be our excuse for writing asters instead of chrysanthemums these flowers are here likened to a painter's palette twelve Lancets. behold the wild geese wending homeward mingled with the pilgrim bands a picture of two simultaneous processions the homeward bound pilgrims on solid earth and the wild geese in the sky above them the flights of wild geese northward in spring southward in autumn are among the most characteristic sights of the japanese landscape thirteen oh flowery moor stretching athwart mount fuji's slope so pleasantly the luxuriance of the wild flowers on fuji's lower slope especially on the western and southern sides in the month of august is astonishing fourteen awaji awaji to hanami kana kyurai sixteen fifty one to seventeen o four no friends oh let me meet no friends when i am gazing at the flowers fifteen a sabre what has such to do on one who comes to view the flowers because aesthetics and war agree ill together sixteen the heartless government office i and the cuckoo a humorous juxtaposition of incongruities seventeen what haste a shower in the offing and sails set straight and sails set slant a vignette of a fleet of junks caught in a sudden squall the sailors are shown running hither and thither and trimming the sails now to set their craft running before the wind and anon to put her on the port or starboard tack eighteen i will contemplate from fushimi's abandoned castle grounds the moon fushimi near kyoto was the site of hideyoshi's great castle palace of momoyama the most splendid edifice ever reared on japanese soil it was given over to the flames soon after its builder's death nineteen tis evening and in serried file stand the bare pinnacles of cloud twenty bit by a sorry mate the cat intently gazes at the sky crossed in love the tomcat gazes sentimentally at the firmament twenty-one sixteen sixty three to seventeen o four how many may be hurrying through the drizzle on the bridge of seta the immensely long bridge of seta near lake biwa is a favourite theme with the poets and artists of japan here its length is suggested by the mention of a countless multitude twenty two nothing remaineth for the snow hath blotted out both moor and hill twenty three 
what mid the flowers the woodpecker is seeking out a withered tree highly unesthetic of the bird to neglect the blossoms and prefer a withered trunk twenty four in autumn a cicada dead beside the shell that it cast off autumn a cicada's cast off shell even the cicada itself dead a set of dreary images typical of the nothingness of human fate twenty five behold the leaf that sinks and clings below the water to a rock the observation of a tiny fact in nature so is the next for any careful eye will have noted the amusingly knowing look on the face of a duck when raising its head after a dive twenty-six the teal with face fresh from the sight of what below the water lies twenty seven died seventeen fifteen literally cold too is the interval before the moxa dots dry spring breeze this verse is here quoted because it refers to a curious custom for which see things japanese adding to the account there given the following particulars the usual plan is for the patients to disrobe to the waist before the chief practitioner often a buddhist priest as the scene too is often a buddhist temple marks in sepia on their persons the spots that are to be treated they then remove to another apartment round which they squat in a line while the priest's disciple or acolyte goes from one to another applying the cautery to each in turn one dot at a time so that if a patient has several spots to be burned there is at least an interval between the steps of his torture it is of course a chilly process from beginning to end as the patient has to sit half naked twenty eight Shiko. 1665 to 1731 plum blossoms is it that the sap still courses through that single branch the subject of this epigram was doubtless a plum tree all whose branches save one were dead 29 oh the white clouds nay rather blossoms lilies that bend across the fence the poet likens his neighbour's lilies to white clouds thirty weary perhaps of dolorous love the cat has stolen a bit to eat thirty-one yeah. 1663 to 1740 a cat's amours from the beginning he caterwauls he's to be pitied 32 yeah. lo johnny in his father's name come to present congratulations namely on new year's day Aiba Corson singles out this verse for praise. It pictures to us the self-importance of the little fellow, dressed in his best and charged with so ceremonious a mission. 33. After I've swept and tidied up, a down for some camellias. He has been getting his villa ready for a poetry meeting, but when all seemed finished some camellias suddenly tumbled from their stalks onto the garden path and make the place look untidy this peculiarity of the camellia is referred to by several poets thirty four 
Yaha. The Nightingale, and, at the gate, the unexpected bean-curd vendor. The advent of the petty tradesman just as the nightingale is singing makes a humorous contrast. 35. Yukukumo wo neteite miru ya natsudashiki yaha. A summer room where, lying down, I see the clouds as they go past. The poet, taking his siesta on a July afternoon, watches the clouds float lazily across the sky. 36. Yakenikeri, Sanedomo Hanawa, Chirisumashi, Hokushi. Died 1718. I am burned out. Nevertheless, the flowers have duly bloomed and faded. The first line of the English rendering is absolutely literal, including the prosaic word nevertheless. The words corresponding to the second line say literally no more than that the flowers have fallen unconcernedly. But the sense is as here given. The story goes that Hokushi's house having been burnt down one day, his friends flocked to present their condolence. But he, like a true bohemian, only laughed and sent them away with this epigram. Its gist is that so trifling a matter, which did not interfere with the course of nature, was not worth a second thought. End of section four. End of Basho, the chief poet of Japan, and the Hokku, or epigram verses, by Matsuo Basho. Translated by Basil Hall Chamberlain.